okay so hello everyone in this particular video we'll be discussing about bubble sort and after that we'll be discussing about various properties of bubble sort just to find out whether bubble sort can be or is of much use to us or not okay so bubble sort uh, actually tries to perform a sub task repeatedly so repetitively it tries to uh, perform a sub task so what that sub task is that uh, let's say I'm given an input array. Let us say that the input array looks something like this. And my subtask is to get the largest number at the last position. So the largest number in this particular array is 10. So I have to get the largest number, whichever the number might be. I have to get the largest number at the last position so over here so how it can be done so i'll just discuss the way bubble sort tries to do this subtask okay so what bubble sort tries to do is that it tries to compare each and every consecutive elements and if one is greater than the other then it swaps it to the rightmost part of it so that it can keep shifting the largest number to the last position so if i have to like do this so it will compare these two numbers because 3 is greater than 2 so it will swap these two numbers and the rest of the elements will set will keep setting in their places so now we have the array looking something like this so now it will compare what the bubble sort will compare these two numbers now because 10 is greater than 3 so it will not swap and it is to the rightmost part of the array only so it will not swap the two elements because we have to shift the largest number to the rightmost part okay so now it will compare 10 with 9 now because 10 is greater than 9 so it will swap 10 with 9 and our array will look something like this so as you can see that we are actually able to shift the largest number to the rightmost part of the array and eventually to the end index so now it will compare these two elements now because 10 is greater than 8 so it will swap these two elements and our array will look something like this so we have been able to complete this particular subtask the subtask was to get the largest number in the array to the last index so now if we keep performing or keep repeating this subtask for the other elements of uh, the array as well so let's say we, once we have got the largest number in the array fixed then we can get the second largest uh, element in the array also fixed so now if we like perform this then we'll be comparing this to now two is less than three so they are in very much in their position and uh, we'll be comparing these two now because 9 is greater than 3 so we need not shift because uh, so now we'll compare these two now because 9 is greater than 8 so I need to shift this so now I have got after my second pass or the second round I've got the second largest number fixed in as well so I'll just keep repeating uh, this particular procedure for all the elements so at the end I'll have my sorted array right okay so now uh, we'll have a look at the bubble court uh, bubble sort code so here as we discussed that bubble sort performs a subtask of shifting the largest number to the end so here this is the code for that subtask so we start from the 0th element and go till the point for the first round we go till n minus 1 then go till n minus 2 right so we keep on shifting till n minus 1 for the first round and then for the second round we keep shifting till n minus 2 so for j is equals to 0 because we start from the 0th index and go till whatever is the length of that round right and if the leftmost element is greater than not the leftmost but the out of the two consecutive elements if the left element is greater than the right element 
then you actually swap those elements right and you have to repeat this subtask for the uh, for almost n minus 1 number of times so uh, with the length of n minus 1 for the first round with the length of n minus 2 for the second round and you have to keep continuing this right so this is how the code for bubble sort looks like so it is actually very like simple one so if we like run through the code on our sample input so let's say the input array is something like this then uh, length of round initially is n minus 1 so in this case there are five elements so the length of round would be 4 for the first round right and for j is equal to 0 so we start off the index from here and we then compare aj and aj plus we compare these two in case aj is greater than aj plus 1 then we swap these two so now the array will become 2 3 10 9 8 right so now again will uh, uh, rj will be incremented to 1 right after every after the loop completes i mean not the loop after one iteration of the loop completes j is incremented so j will now point over to 3 so now we compare 3 and 10 because 3 is all uh, less than 10 which is so it, this case is not actually satisfied so we don't swap now we increment rj and we are here now we compare these two now because 10 is greater than 9 so we actually swap so 2 3 9 10 8 so now j comes over here now j is uh, less than the length of round which is 4 because j is 3 right now here the index is 3 okay so we once again uh, swap these two elements because a of j which is a of 3 is greater than a of 4 so we actually swap these two and at the at the end of the first round we get an array looking like this so this is uh, the we have got the largest element in the last index so we actually now in the second iteration we repeat it till repeat the subtask till n minus 2 uh, length so that is why we have decremented the length of the round to by 1 after this for loop is once completed so after this subtask is once com completed right so now we again uh, con i mean repeat this subtask we compare these two 2 and 3 2 is already less than 3 so j actually increments j now points to this so we actually compare these two 3 is less than 9 so it is perfectly fine we did not swap now j is incremented j is pointing over to here now because j is less or i mean aj is less than aj plus 1 so the condition is this particular condition is getting satisfied and we need to swap so what we do is that 2 3 8 9 so now j is equal to the length of round which is n minus 2 so we will not be making the this comparison because the loop will not i mean the last iteration in the last iteration after the last iteration j would be equal to n minus 2 and for our loop for this code to have been executed we wanted the j to be less than the n minus 2 not equal to n minus 2 so the, basically the code will run over till here only okay so this is like the perfect code that we have written for bubble sort so you can like uh, note this down in your compiler and run this to see if this works fine or not so now we'll be jumping over and discuss the properties of this particular algorithm which is bubble sort okay so before like uh, getting into discussing that which all properties are algorithm bubble sort algorithm actually possesses we will look at its runtime complexity so the original bubble sort that we have discussed has the best case runtime complexity of 
order of n square because even in the best case the best case would be that when my array is already sorted then also I'm not really like doing any kind of checks and I'm repeating this two loops again and again now so for the first round that is executed this particular loop runs for n minus number of n minus one number of times so for j is equals to zero it will run and so on it will run till uh, till uh, j becomes equal to the length of round which is initially for the first pass is, uh, for the first round it is equal to n minus one so it will uh, the inner loop will run for n minus one number of times so this code will also execute for n minus one number of times now for the second round this code will run for n minus two number of times because now the length of round will be reduced to n minus two because after every round the length of round is decreased by one is decremented by one so it will go on and in the last round it will only be executed this particular code will only make one comparison so this code will be executed only for one uh, only once so this loop will only run for one time so if we like sum this up then it will come out to be n into n minus 1 into n by 2 right so which is nothing but of order n square n square right so even in the best case when my array is sorted then also my bubble sort the original bubble sort code that I've written will take order of n square so right after this we'll be discussing a modified bubble sort which will actually take order of n only so but this uh, this is the original bubble sort algorithm that we just discussed so in that case it is even in the best case it is taking order of n square and in the worst case of course it will take order of n square only so I mean it is not getting affected by the pre sortedness whether the array is sorted or not even in that case it is taking like uh, the same amount of time right so uh, what is the extra space required apart from the temp variables that we have used there is no recursion in this algorithm right so there is no extra space on the stack frame that is being uh, taken up and only the temporary variables like this loop variables and this temporary variables are the extra space that is being taken up so this is like only a constant amount of space so extra space required is only constant okay so because no extra space is being taken up so it is of course in place okay so okay and uh, is it stable is my bubble sort algorithm stable now what is actually a stable algorithm so a stable algorithm is one which is able to maintain the relative order of the elements with equal keys so we have like discussed about this property so in case I have an array with uh, which is looking something like this then after I'm I'm done with sorting this particular array then also this particular element with the this key should come first not first I mean before this particular element comes up in the final output so this should come up before this in the sorted one okay uh, okay so now we need to discuss whether our bubble sort is equal or uh, okay stable or not so uh, if we look at our algorithm in case aj is greater than aj plus only only in that case we swap else we do not so in even in case even in this case when I have two elements so it will this nev uh, this particular element which is on the left hand side might get shifted and it might reach somewhere near to its like uh, element with the same key but it will never be able to cross this particular element because it, it will never get swapped with this element right so e even while shifting it might come over here but it will not be able to cross the element with the same key so its relative order will always be maintained because 
it will never be it will never satisfy this property so you can like uh, pause the video and think about this so it will actually never be able to satisfy this property and will never be able to uh, go over to a position in case this gets shifted to the right and it is somewhere here it reaches somewhere here then this might also like get shifted and reach somewhere over here but it will never be able to overtake this particular element and go like two more right than this so we have this in our bucket list that it is stable as well so before discussing whether it is adaptive or not we'll be discussing whether it is online or not so on an online algorithm is which can integrate the dynamically generated elements as well let's say i have uh, this particular array so after first round i will have the array in this form three eight two ten right after the first round is completed and after the second round it will be something like this oh, sorry it will be something like this now let's say after like second round uh, element is dynamically generated let's say uh, one is generated or let's say even in uh, the case it is the whole sorting process of this particular array has been completed so in that case we will have an array which will look something like this so it will be looking 2 3 8 and 10 and now if my uh, a new element one is generated then i cannot really like uh, get this one into its right position with minimal number of changes i'll have to start the bubble sort all over again so i'll have to now again go from the round one that is to get the element with the largest number in its uh, last index so again i'll have to like start the algorithm so it is actually not online right because every time a new element come up i'll have to restart my algorithm in order to get all the numbers sorted so it is actually not an online algorithm now discussing about whether it is adaptive or not so as we have seen that uh, even in the case it is sorted then also it is taking order of n square time and in case it is not sorted then also it is taking order of n square time only so it the running time complexity of bubble sort is actually not a function of the pre-sortedness of the input array so it is actually not adaptive but there are a few modifications that can be done to the bubble sort a very few minor one that can be done to the bubble sort which can make it adaptive okay so in this particular algorithm if in this particular algorithm uh, so after the third round while we were running the bubble sort algorithm on this particular input array after the third round or even after the second round only i had this array so if you uh, see this is like already sorted so i need not run the algorithm for this and then for this particular element and so on so what i can do is that once i've got uh, so what modification i can make to this bubble sort is that in case i'm running this subtask in case i'm running this subtask of comparing all my uh, consecutive elements and in case there is no swap then that would mean that all my elements are at its position at its required position so in that case i sh uh, i should like uh, make this uh, i should conclude this that my array is already sorted so uh, i repeat that in case i am running a particular round and in that particular round while comparing all the consecutive elements there is no swapping so this particular condition actually never gets executed then in that case i can consider 
that my uh, that my array is already sorted so what i can so in order to con, uh, include that into my code what i can do is that i can make another variable another temporary variable or you can say flag whose initial value would be false okay and in case it gets uh, if this condition gets true once okay it cannot be false right i can take it i can take it as bool boolean variable so boolean flag it is false initially and in case this condition gets satisfied then i can make this boolean variable as true so and i can now make this check over here that after my subtask is completed after my subtask is completed if my flag is still equal to false that means that this particular part of code wasn't really executed then i can break the loop the outer loop and hence my uh, i'll be able to reduce its runtime complexity so in if i have this particular modified bubble sort and if i try to consider its best time best case complexity then that would be order of n because let's say i have a sorted array right then in that case this if i run my modified bubble sort on this sorted array then it will keep comparing the consecutive elements and it will not be able to like uh, get into that if condition because there will be no swaps so in case that there is no swaps the flag will be false and the it will bre break out of the outer loop so it will run only on in order of n time complexity so this particular uh, modified bubble sort is actually adaptive as well because in case uh, depending upon the pre sortedness of uh, my input array it is taking less time and in case my array is not sorted then it is taking relatively more time right so my modified bubble sort is actually adaptive as well but my original bubble sort is not adaptive right so my original bubble sort is not adaptive but modified one is actually adaptive okay so it is not online but it is stable and in place okay fine so i'll wrap up the video and in the next video we'll discuss selection sort